Well, uh, do another short video here. Looks like uh, Barry Hussein Obama decided to go to uh, Twitter and make his own comments. He's trying to be like Trump. You know, I guess he's got a new hero. Should have picked a new hero years ago before he picked that Muslim that he's been following. But it says, uh, this is on Zero Hedge, which is a good website. It says, Obama brags about remarkable progress of his past eight years. <laughs> really? And it says, our data paints a slightly different picture. As we close out 2016 and draw near to the end of the Obama eight-year reign in the White House, our commander-in-chief decided to celebrate by once again telling us all how awesome he thinks he is. That's a mental disorder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he thinks he's awesome, that's a mental disorder. And we all know he's mental. And uh, it tells how awesome he thinks he is through lovely tweets on Twitter. Of course, as he often does, POTUS decided to highlight the number of private sector jobs that were added under his presidency as proof of his remarkable progress. Yeah, all part-time minimum wage while shipping all the good jobs overseas. Thank you, Bill Clinton. That's another piece of shit. NAFTA and GAP. Yeah, him and Hillary, they're the ones that shipped everything overseas. Yeah, give them the credit where credit is due. And while the gross numbers may look impressive, a quick look at the employment to population ratio reveals that even after Obama's recovery, yeah, great recovery there, Barry, we still have the lowest percentage of our population actually employed at any point since the mid 80s. I think it was 1984 to be exact. This looks slightly less than remarkable progress, Barry. Yeah, you can go to Zero Heads and look this article up and look at his tweets. It's embarrassing. It really is. I mean, he's an embarrassment to this nation. It's no wonder all the countries are laughing at him. And then uh, another article from uh, the Free FreeThoughtProject.com. Facts Force Washington Post retract viral story on Russian hacking the U.S. power grid. <laughs> yeah, Washington slime. It was all lies. False flag coming is what they say. Yet again, corporate media has been caught delivering fake news as the Washington Post, responsible for deeming the entirety of alternative media Russian propagandists and falsely claiming the U.S. intelligence community found Russian hackers responsible for meddling in the presidential election. Yeah, there was no hacks. Putin even said... Look at the IPs. There is no IPs. A hack can be spotted. It was insider leaks. You know, it was patriots inside the CIA, FBI, NSA that couldn't stand Hillary Rotten Clinton. And they boldly declared the Russians hacked Vermont's power grid, putting the nation in peril. But it just didn't happen, the Department of Homeland Security says. While our analyst continues, we currently have no information that indicates that the power group was penetrated by this cyber incident. DHS Assistant for Public Affairs, Todd Brazell, said in a statement cited by Politico. Although the Washington Post sounded the alarm with this article titled, Russian Operation Hacked a Vermont Utility, Showing Risk of U.S. Electrical Power Grid and the Security System, suggesting the nation's power supply stood at risk to be taken down. The outlet has since been forced to retract this claim because literally no evidence supports the assertion. A note from the editor now graces the article clarifying that an earlier version of this story incorrectly said that Russian hackers had penetrated the U.S. electric grid. Authorities say there is no indication of that so far. The computer at Burlington Electric that was hacked was not attached to the grid. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's an independent system not attached to the grid. Therefore, hacking can't happen. God, Washington, Washington Post. No wonder they're going out with all the other slime media. City-owned utility Burlington Electric Department raised concerns after ostensibly discovering malware on a laptop. The same variety of malware listed as possibly linked to Russia. 
in a disclaimer laden report from DHS and FBI, but the utility and DHS have since explained the computer was not connected in any way to the power system. Yeah, <laughs> go figure that out. But I guarantee you their little retraction was probably on the last page of this Washington Post slime paper. I guarantee it was a little bitty article on the back page that nobody ever even looked at. And then this last article I want to kind of cover a little bit. George Soros. George the Jew Soros. Plotting a financial Armageddon to stop Trump. Well, everybody knows who George Soros is. He's the one that bust all the protesters in and paid them by the hour to all these Trump events to try to instigate problems in all these cities where the protests were coming up. Soros was paying them by the hour, busting them from out of state. The police that arrested these instigators noticed that all of them had out-of-state driver's licenses. That's because Soros is the one that shipped them in. Well, the article goes on, and it's... Uh, the article's by Paul Martin. Paul Martin's usually spot on. Frusp frustrated by his failed attempts to control the future U.S. and world policy, George Soros has returned to what he knows best, market manipulation. In an attempt to stop Trump from dismantling meticulous plans for the new world order, he knows Trump's going to dismantle anything Odumbo done. Soros' plan to install establishment puppet Hillary Clinton in the White House failed despite multi-million dollar funding from the notorious globalist billionaire. You know, he's had like four heart transplants, three heart transplants. Let the son of a bitch die. <laughs> Attempts to destabilize the country through funding fake grassroots protests known as astroturfing also failed, leaving Soros thwarted. An unusual position the octo oct octogenarian has never found himself in before. I've never seen that word before. Soros' new tricks, funding and controlling puppet politicians and puppet movements, have been exposed around the world, forcing the notorious billionaire to revert to his tried and tested methods for establishing control. Soros is manipulating the markets, the stock markets, again. Pundits and market analysis have been keeping a close eye on the wounded beast, in recent weeks to determine the next move, and reports are now emerging that the funds Soros wasted on Clinton are set to be dwarfed by the amount of money he is now spending on the bond market. The plan is to create financial Armageddon and unleash hell before Trump or as Trump enters office, driving the Western world, and in particular the United States, to the edge of ruin. Out of the flames of the Phoenix will rise with this and it will be Soros, vision of a new world order. Okay. So he's planning on <clears throat> manipulating the stock market, the bond market, probably buying up millions of dollars worth of worthless bond stocks and getting everybody to dive in, you know, all the poor investors. Oh, my God, this stock's climbing. And then at the last minute, he's going to sell, sell everything. And Trump needs to watch this stock market and that is called stock manipulation. If he gets in there <clears throat> and dumps all this stock all of a sudden to cause a panic and to cause a crash, he needs to be in prison. And when his next heart fails, <laughs> let him die in a prison cell. You know, this Soros, sore ass. He's a sore ass because Hillary Clinton didn't get in. That's exactly why he's a sore ass. You know, people like that need to be removed from this world. You know, and, and like I said again, we dodged a missile not putting Hillary Clinton in there. And from what I've been reading, and I'll do a video probably tomorrow, she is still, they're opening up new investigations. Trump has uh, placed two federal investigators in charge, and they're going into the Clinton Foundation now. They're looking at money laundering. They're looking at pay-for-play. They're going to uncover a lot of things, but they're waiting for Trump to take office before they make their last move because Onumbo will try to pardon her, but she can't be pardoned until the charges are levied. If there's no charges, you can't make a blanket pardon if you don't know what the pardon is for. So this fool is waiting for Trump to slip up, and that man ain't going to slip up. Trump don't slip up. Trump's got good advisors. He's got good people behind him. He's surrounded by good people. 
And that's how you run a country. You don't surround them like with idiots. You know, uh, my God, that's all Clinton and, and uh, old Dumbo. They surrounded themselves with morons. Loretta Lynch, really? Oh, my God. What preschool did they pull her out of? You know, my, uh, it's, just, it's sad. It's really sad. Well, hope you enjoy this video. And uh, like and share. And uh, I'll probably see you tomorrow with another video.